Whatever a film's purpose, it should always be given smooth, professional projection. Careful planning and preparation are essential to achieving the professional projection, which will help the audience get the most out of the films it sees. Get a drink, have a good time now. Welcome to paradise. 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 It's me, Isaiah Marquette here, and I'm here to blow your mind with Super 8 facts. No, I'm just here to tell you about Super 8 film. That's really it. I mean, I don't know why I even brought that up. I mean, Super 8 facts. What are you doing? Are you? I am here to talk to you about Super 8 film, and why would you want to use Super 8 film in your movie? Or why would you even want to use Super 8 at all? What is a Super 8? What is a, what is a, what is that? Like, is it an indie band from, like, 1992? Is it, like, some sort of, some sort of, is it some sort of machine? Is it some sort of, like... It's secret code. It, is Super 8 like the one with the eight kids and they're like super because they made a movie and then when they made the movie about zombies, the alien attacks them. So after asking that insane question, let's kind of get into the whole principles of what film is. A brief history of the working of film. Motion picture film started in the late 1800s and up to the early 1900s. Pretty much the basic idea of animation had arisen. The concept was to take a series of still images and replay them back in a sequential order in order to make the illusion of movement. But I'm wrong, when the first camera was invented, we were able to actually capture real light bouncing off the object onto a piece of celluloid film. Over time, some people started to realize if you took the concept of photography and mixed it within the concept of moving and animation, you were able to actually conceive an illusion of motion picture. Several cameras were then invented so that you were able to spool film past a shutter and a lens in order to capture multiple pictures at once. Once that strip of film was played back to their projector, it created the illusion of a motion picture. So motion pictures are just Still pictures join together on a long strip of film. The more still pictures we get while the action is going on, the smoother it looks. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we'll go over a couple of simple film formats. When the film for first started, yeah, it was pretty much 35 millimeter. I mean, there were some other aspect ratios and different type of film stocks, but we can get into that another time. But the point is, is that we started off with 35 millimeter, and 35 millimeter was pretty much a pretty expensive uh, film stock to work with. Until later, when the 1930s or 1940s came around, and the very first um, available film stocks or just film cameras in general were uh, supplied to the general public, you'd be able to get your own 35 millimeter camera if you were freaking rich. If you were filthy rich. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you were the standard consumer in the 1940s or pretty much later on in that general, uh, you probably would have gotten yourself a 16 millimeter camera. Like this. This is the K3. Uh, it's, ma it's made of, of metal. It's heavy as shit. This isn't even the whole thing. I just, this is the bare, the best. Tax. This is the best. You know, this is it. You know, it's 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 uh, it's huge. And this was just a standard consumer camera of of that era. I mean, this particular camera was actually made in the 1960s. But this is a prime example of what you were available to in that era. Just in that period, they say they made things to last. Last, and boy, the Russians. They, they really knew what they were doing. I mean, I might butcher the name. That's why I call it the K3. This is this nickname, the K3. I believe it's the Kindergrask 3, the I'm gonna die. Yeah, no, this was this was a pretty much your standard camera of the era. Uh, you had to roll it up on rolls, as your standard film was always on, was on these classic rolls. And you're able to roll it in with the film. You'd be able to roll the film in the whole machine, and then just by winding it up, because it was clockwork. Okay. Pretty much by winding it up. Ugh, because it's clockwork. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. Sorry, I'm just lazy. I'm just a scrawny kid. And then you just run the camera from there. But yeah, no, that's kind of your standard on 16 millimeter film. Uh, it was 16 millimeters wide. It would be able to have a 4 by 3 aspect ratio unless you shot at super 60 millimeter, which was the later development. But uh, that was kind of your standard ordeal. Then somebody, some awesome man, I don't know what his name is, but we'll, uh, he's this man right here. I, I put his credits or whatever. I'll do a little editing later. Some awesome man was like, hey, you know what? Why don't, why don't we cut that in half and make this more accessible to the, to the general public and give him something a lot simple to work with. Therefore, hence the development of the 8mm camera. And with these new cameras by Kodak, you'll find that movies are just as easy to take a snapshot. 
8 millimeter camera was pretty much exactly what it says. The film stock was 8 millimeters wide. The idea came out of the concept of what if you took 16 millimeter film and cut it in half and be able to use both sides of the film stock to, to reproduce an image. And that's exactly what they did. They would take a, a 16 millimeter film and you load it in the camera and you show one side of the film. Once that film stock was done, you'd be able to load out the film again and then re-spool it, swap the reels pretty much, re-spool it again through the camera and be able to shoot on the other side of the film. Therefore, it was a lot more compact, and it was a lot more accessible to use, a lot cheaper to use, and it was just the standard camera. And this camera was pretty much used ever since it came out in like the, the mid-1940s up until um, the up until pretty much whenever 8mm film landed, probably back in the 90s, if you get down to it, early 90s or so. But in the 1960s, this was when the revolution came apart of Super 8 film. <laughs> Now we kind of got tired of the, of the simple idea of like shooting on really tiny grainy film because it wasn't just enough to work with. The, like, the local public was either given the choice of really small film or really high quality 60mm film or you can just choose from there or you can just get higher from there. Now resulting back to the original question at the beginning of this video, what is Super 8 film? Well Super 8 film was pretty much just the solution to the 8mm problem. Make the picture bigger, faster, and sharper. Typically, 8mm film ran at a very short frame rate. This was probably around 14 frames per second all the way up to 18 frames per second. The reason behind this is because you were given a very limited amount of film stock, and the cameras at the time wasn't able to really run at a very faster pace because it was clockwork. That was unless you had a speed adjustment monitor on thing, which could probably run up to 30 frames per second, but you eat up the majority of your film. Now then, when Super 8 came along, this was a given a lot more freedom to work with. Considering the fact that Super 8 film came in a small cartridge, you no longer had to swap the film reels anymore. You were able to shoot on one roll and one go. When it comes down to Super 8 film, the most important thing to remember is that the picture is actually a lot bigger than the standard 8mm film. 8mm film was restricted because of the size of the sprocket holes, but later on we figured that we should just make the sprocket holes a lot smaller and widen the picture. Now, typically you were still given a 4x3 aspect ratio, but later we figured that you could actually widen the aspect ratio if you choose not to use the soundtrack, giving it a 16x9 aspect ratio. But of course these developments came in a later period. When sound film became more of an obsolete, when Super 8 started becoming a major artistic form. Super 8's frame rate had also increased too. We were able to speed up the frame rate, frame rate to about 24 frames per second, which was your standard frame rate at the time period. That is until later we moved up to a nice smooth 30 frames per second when it comes to a lot of digital cameras. But that still doesn't restrict film from doing so. Now then, we finally get to the question, now why do you even want to use Super 8 film in the first place? I mean, come on, it's grainy, it's scratchy, sometimes the color can be off, sometimes you can even get chewed up with projector. I mean, why would you even want to use such a format in the first place? It's kind of flawed. I don't know, I think it's a crock of shit, but... And that is exactly why people want to use it. Because it's flawed. Super 8 film supplies itself with such a scratchy, grainy image this can be used in so much artistic expressionism. Super 8 film has commonly been used in the sense of dreams or memories used in the past, some sort of long lost documentation, or, or it just can be used as self-aware within the idea of it is a classic film look. As the most films were made in the 60s and 70s, this is exactly what they wanted to apply with it. My recent film, Sphere Cycle, which I'm very proud of, has entirely been shot on Super 8 film. Well, about 80% of it. Due to the fact that we ran out of money, we had to shoot about 15-10% to 10 of it completely on digital. But that was due to the fact that we had a low budget on the film. But we tried our best to keep as honest as possible to the classic Super 8 film format. We wanted people to identify it as a classic movie made in modern era. So that we can recapture the B-movie cinema feel of the 70s and 60s. And now... When you see motion pictures, you get a true picture of what really happens. A picture that you could never see in any other way. In conclusion, Super 8 film, or in this matter, any type of celluloid film, is just an inventive playground that any filmmaker can use to tell their story in a much more visually interesting manner. But if there's one thing I'm going to leave you with, is that it is essential for any type of filmmaker at all to understand the principles of what makes movies movies. So please feel free to experiment with whatever analog materials that you can experiment with. Make your movie as visually interesting as the story is. So in conclusion, grab a camera and make a movie. I'm Isaiah Markop, and this has been Why You Super 8. 
See the Medallion 8 movie camera at your Kodak dealers. It's only $11 down. And also see the three lens medallion turret model. They're made by Kodak, so you know they're good.